Coffee and Tools, episode 98. Uh, this week I wanted to talk about something that uh, involves a power, uh, a slide actually in this case. This is a powered dolly, but that's what was sort of, sort of exciting and I wanted to share the, share the situation with you. And because it involves welding, it involves uh, a little bit of woodwork and some pipe and what have you. So I thought it's kind of a cool project and you know some people out there might be interested if you're into photography, YouTubing or filmmaking, whatever, this, this might be for you. Hey, you know. The first thing I did was I needed to buy this little guy right here. This is uh, Anover. I'll provide a link for it in the description below if you want to take a look at one. The quality of this thing is actually, for the price, I'd say it's pretty good. There's been a few issues with it, and I'd like to get into that with you, but I'll also show you, you know, how I made my slide, or my powered slide at this point. And it's probably the cheapest thing I've ever put together, but for photography. Uh, I was talking to a fella uh, in uh, Germany, a filmmaker, uh, early this morning, and we were discussing power slides and what have you. and. I suddenly realized I had planned on uh, videotaping this and showing you know you guys what this project involved, and we ne I just never got back to it. I thought, man, today 98, yeah, let's do the this, let's do this. So when this came in, I was pretty pretty impressed. You charge it on a USB, and it has a little control button for speeds, and it has an on and off button. It also came with a remote. Uh, the remote never worked from the day one when it came in, so I don't really need a remote. You know yourself when you're filming, uh, you can always reach over, turn the button on, have the thing run, and shut it off, and you can clip out whatever it is you want from your film, so it's not really, you can edit out the big, no big deal. But the powered Andover does the trick, it does do the job. I'm pretty pretty happy with, the quality build was, was pretty amazing. All of this came in for, you know, pretty low price, really. So that was happy thought. Now the thing I discovered quickly after it came in, I suddenly noticed underneath that these wheels that drive it also have this rubber uh, back wheel back here, smaller rubber back wheel. And I says, wait a minute, this thing can actually run down or follow or be on a track, you know, like a railroad track. So I thought, man, that is so cool. There's a lot of things I can do with that. So. I wanted to develop a track. Now I have a 3D printer. Obviously I could build a, uh, a 3D uh, track or something and have this thing run down the track, but uh, the simplest, cheapest way was to get some uh, EMT pipe. Uh, this is mechanical uh, electrical pipe that you can get at like Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever. And I bought a 10 foot length, cut it in half, so I have two five foot pieces. And there's the uh, one end and there's the it's the other end, <laughs> and so it's pretty long. I measured the job I was doing at the time, and this was the length I needed. I also felt that having a good long track would be, you know, it'd be better because, you know, you could always shorten the clip down or shorten the shot, but if you don't have enough track for, you know, the pan or whatever it is you're after, it could be a problem. So I decided to go with the whole five feet of uh, pipe for this assembly. And uh, using that uh, inexpensive little MIG welder that's out in the shop, I welded a piece of steel plate here. And uh, this was really to uh, reinforce the pipe to pull it together so that the pipe under load wouldn't you know, separate or wobble. Uh, this is only half inch EMT conduit, which is, you know, tell you the truth, half inch EMT, I can push on it like this, look, it's not moving. But it's not gonna carry, obviously it's not gonna carry a couple of hundred pounds or something, but for our, for our sake, this was the, here's this, this is the deal, this is where things got kind of screwy. And I had to figure out a way to make this work. When you get the end over, you can steer, the, steer it around by changing the position of the wheels. And I thought that would be, you know, that's awesome. But the problem was on a track, no matter how I set this, it would get, you know, cattywampus and it would climb, try to climb over the pipe here and climb over the track. So after a lot of experimentation, I discovered, I guess we'll call it the, the Hanover secret, <laughs> that if you offset the wheels just a little bit in, so that it's actually fighting itself against the track, it will actually go ahead and motor down the track and it won't climb out. It'll just keep following even though there's an arc here right now. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's arcing. So in other words, it's trying to do you know one of these. 
when it's under uh, underway. The only one that drives is this back wheel. So that's sort of a bit of a problem with track because really if you had a wheel at the front and the back and it was driving down the track, it would probably handle a little bit better. Where all the pu push is back here, it has a tendency to, like I said, to try to drive over the track. If these are dead, uh, you know, like that, dead straight, won't work. It'll actually try to climb the track. But if you offset the wheel a little bit, like I did there, where it's actually trying to make a curve, it'll actually sit on my pipe and go down the track. And what I did was I measured the distance here between the, ideally put a ruler across here, measured from here to here, and then spaced these two out so that they would be the same, welded them. I took some cheap uh, block of, you know, this is like uh, one and a half by one and a half. This is an old leg cut out of a piece of broken furniture. Again, low budget, man, low budget. We're not spending any money on this project. And I drilled it out, and unfortunately I had to do this, which I sort of was upset with, but I had to uh, drill a hole down through and drive a machine screw in each. This helped to secure and lock the pipe into each end. And both ends are basically the same. Uh, this is just some 3 8 dolly. And again, it was all cut in order to uh, give the height at the time that I needed for that project. This is where things got a little funky. I really wanted to put some uh, foldable you know, legs on this thing so that this whole rig would be a lot more portable than it is right now. But here's what happens when you do this. Like I said, this is offset a little bit. And I'll turn it on. Let's see if we can... As soon as I remember how. There we go. And we'll hit the start button. And this is on full speed, so it's going as fast as it can go. But with the wheels offset a little bit, it fights the track, it finds this like happy groove spot, and it just goes right on down the track. So as you're filming and your camera's of course mounted here, like say this one here could be mounted on it, and the camera's panning across and you're getting the shot you want. So it's a very, the whole rig is a very inexpensive setup. Uh, granted, you'll have to have, uh, a well, you know, you'll have to get somebody to either weld a piece of plate or something in here. Uh, we'll just see if we can't turn that around and go backwards. But as you can see, just the way I've got it set up right now, and I've just got it laying on my, my workbench here, but this thing is not trying to crawl over the pipe. It's just following the pipe. or. It's really, it's actually dragging, it's fighting the pipe, but it's fighting it under controlled circumstances so that it won't climb out on me. Uh, that's where this whole climbing over the track thing was uh, frustrating. And as you can see, uh, we did this the other week. Uh, I put the little head on here, the bender's head, and uh, took bender's head for a ride past the camera. That was done a couple episodes ago, but this gives you that nice smooth shot that you're really after with your camera and you can go past something. The reason I like this setup was, uh, let's see if we can stop you, yeah, there, there we go, uh, was also that if you're doing like a, a small tool or something on a workbench, you can, you know, position this thing like with your wheels and you can set this down, have your camera angled down, and, you know, whatever your topic is, uh, Bob or Stu Stuart, Stuart, I think. And uh, you could film Stuart and say go around him or something with the camera. So that was really what I was after uh, at the, uh, well, so the, the excitement was these rubber wheels that I found under here with the Andover. I didn't realize it was gonna come with those. So that was really, you know, that was a big deal. Yeah, it really was, you know, big discovery there. <laughs> so let's do, uh, let's do something with Stuart, I think. Yeah, okay. And what I'll do is I'll make a pass with Stuart. So one of the uh, cool things with this is you can set this up, just the power dolly itself, and like on a workbench or something like that, you could you know circle or go around your topic or whatever have you. And it would be really good if you knew what exact arc 
you have on your wheels. But you can custom set the wheels so you can make whatever arc you want. So, like I said, for you know what it's worth, uh, depending on whether you're uh, a YouTuber or a filmmaker or you're just trying to show some product, you know, it's uh, stop that, and shut that off. The the idea is to get that smooth pan. And I tried by hand, I'll just tell you guys, I tried by hand. I tried a sliding a pillow with a camera on top. I tried some plastic and sliding some pieces of plastic over top with a camera, that's really, and you always end up with this jitter, 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 jitter. It's like, no, I want smooth. I want pro looking smooth sort of thing. And for the very small amount of money that this Andover really costs, it's really, a, you know, it's quite a good little setup. Uh, this is one of the, this is probably the cheapest setup I use. It's like a hundred dollar old iPhone 6. And all I use it for is filming. It's not really set up as a phone or it doesn't have internet. It has nothing. It just films for me. That's it, you know. <laughs> and uh, I've always uh, used it because, I mean, look at the things it can do. It, it can rig on to all kinds of different things. I don't care for the quality, so I've got it cranked up to 1080p at uh, 60 frames a second, put that into the uh, editor and, and work with it. It's, it's not ideal, uh, obviously it's not 4K, and it will never be 4K, <laughs> but it still gives me uh, you know, what I want. So, the, uh, so, so there you have it, uh, the Anover that uh, can also run on track and you guys uh, you know yourself this is this is my you know way of doing things uh, but you pr probably uh, I might recommend bigger pipe maybe three quarters out of the half inch that I bought I don't know I'm not sure as far as you know stopping this from climbing out over the track and that can lead to a big disaster depending on the height of you know where you're shooting Pretty inexpensive project all the way around. Uh, first thing was this. And this has more than one use besides running on track. So this was something to buy and use and enjoy. And I've been using it for different shots every once in a while. You guys might not even notice it or you might see, you know, Bender's head going by or something. Well, you know, then yeah, I'm using it. But for track shots, I did not want to get into an expensive slide, power slide, remote control power slide, da, da, da. They're a lot of money. And I'm a cheap date, you know, so. But anyways, this week in Coffee and Tools, hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you have any excitement or questions, maybe you can throw them at me. Uh, like I said, the only thing I was disappointed with, I could never get the remote uh, to work on this and tried the battery, changed the battery, all of it. Never could get the remote to talk to this thing. And to tell you the truth, Anover uh, should probably make uh, an app for an iPhone. So you can just use your phone to, you know, run the power to all back and forth. But Coffee and Tools, we're signing off, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, please, please like, share, blah, 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 you know, the usual.